So let's use our graphing calculator just to get a better idea of what these graphs look like. So if we go to y equals, we can plug in our 1 over x and our 1 over x squared. So for now, I'll turn both graphs on. And I've also customized the window here to match what we used. We go from negative 4 to 4 for our x values, and our y values also go from minus 4 to 4. So looking at our graph, this red curve, if we trace, here's a red curve, that is 1 over x squared. And this blue curve here, that's our 1 over x. So these are our two parent functions, and we can consider them individually. So we can go and let's say turn off the 1 over x, and for this function we actually just graphed by hand, we can check that everything makes sense. First of all, visually they do look very similar, but notice if we plug in 0, it's undefined there, and we'll come back to that. But for values that are very close to 0, notice the y value is very high. In fact, the closer we get to 0, the larger the y value is. And that's true from the negative side as well. If we do minus 0 0.001 and plug that in, we get a very high positive y value. And as we trace along, you can see the y value decreases as the x value increases. In fact, the y values will start getting closer and closer to 0 as x gets larger and larger. And that will be true on the left-hand side. As the negative values for x increase, the y values will get closer and closer to 0. And for our other curve, if we look at this blue curve, 1 over x, I'll turn off the other one, we can see something fairly similar. For instance, it's not defined as 0, so we don't get a y value. And if we look at, let's say, very tiny positive x values, you can see it gives us very large y values. And the smaller this is, the x value, the larger the y value is. But the difference between this one and the graph we just looked at, this 1 over x squared, is that when we plug in negative numbers, let's say a tiny negative number like 0 0.01, that we get large negative y values. So as we trace heading towards the negative values, as x gets tinier and tinier, closer to zero, the y values will get bigger and bigger in the negative direction. And again, for both of these, as x gets bigger and bigger or more and more negative, the y value starts to get closer and closer to zero. But on the left-hand side, it approaches it from the bottom, from the negative side. And on the right-hand side, if we plug in, let's say, 3, it starts approaching it from above, from the positive side. Now, one last point I want to mention is this point where it's not defined. Essentially, this boundary layer here at x equals 0. In fact, we have a specific name for this. We call this an asymptote. Let me change colors here. So when x equals 0, this is what we call, in this case at least, a vertical asymptote. And like I said, this fancy word effectively just means boundary layer that our function will not cross through. And as you might deduce from this, there are such things as horizontal asymptotes. In fact, when y equals 0, that's what we call a horizontal asymptote. Since notice the function is not going to cross this boundary layer as well. It'll get closer and closer to zero, but it will not cross over. So we have asymptotes in two different scenarios here. And again, for our original parent function, this 1 over x, we actually have the same two asymptotes. So when x equals zero, we have our vertical asymptote and when y equals 0, we again have that horizontal asymptote, which often is just abbreviated as HA or VA in this case. And in the next video, we're going to look at the graphs of 1 over x to the third, 1 over x to the fourth, or really any rational function where we have 1 over x to some odd exponent. 
and one over x to some even exponent. We're gonna look for patterns. Effectively, when you have one over x to an odd power, it's gonna look like this parent function, since this is the simplest odd power we can raise it to. And one over x to an even function is gonna look very similar to this graph here, since this is the smallest even power we can raise it to. So we'll notice those patterns and be able to make some generalizations with these rational functions.